Matthew Morris, MM Wood Studio. Today is Sunday, July 12th, and I'm filming an update. Yep, that's right. I'm doing an update early, and the reason is, well, twofold action. Number one, we have guests over on Wednesday for dinner, so I figured I might as well get this done before, but I'm doing it so early because I've been just that productive this week. So um, again, the chair kind of looks like it has been for a while, but there has been so much going on. So for starters, I got the sterling silver placed into my ebony bars, and so that was a lot of fun. I used my jeweler's saw to cut the silver at the bench, holding it into my tail vise. And then from there, I just went ahead and super glued every single one of my pieces of silver in, and then I brought that down to its thickness, which is just a little bit thicker than the ebony with a file. And then after some final sanding with some 220, 320, 600 grit, and then finally a buffing out, this is what you get. And I think the silver looks fantastic. It's in both the front and the back of the chair. And it really makes the whole piece back here really pop. And um, it just looks really great. So that was a lot of fun. Now, um, I ended up with not much silver left. I bought 18 inches of silver and this is all I have left. So that was great. Hope you guys uh, watched all of that on Instagram because uh, I was taking pictures and posting them online as I was putting the silver into the ebony. The next thing I did after doing that was I put the chair back together and I very carefully got all of my parts lined up, my stretchers and my rails. And it's very important to get them lined up at this point because I started cu cutting and finished cutting my house mortises. So I needed everything to be lined up in the exact space, spot it would be for the rest of the time, for the rest of the life of the chair. So that went really well. And then I marked up all of my joinery. And so to do this, you can do one of two things. I, you can use a marking knife and come around and mark everything and, and that's cool. Um, I actually prefer taking a pencil, a fine pencil, 0.05, uh, millimeters or less if you can get it and taking that and using the tip of it and actually making a line on both the piece that you're doing so the rail or the stretcher and the edge of the joint and what that get takes is it divides that 0.05 into half because you're drawing on both sides and that gives you a really fine pencil line and then I just like to um, sit down at the bench take my little router with a sixteenth of an inch bit and remove the waste and then with some chisels work back to just before my pencil line and slowly fit everything in. There you have it, those pencil marks disappeared. We are in. But before I do all of that, I have to get all of these surfaces on the rails and the stretchers to their final surface prep, or very close to it. And then with my little compact DeWalt router um, and a eighth inch round over bit, I rounded over all of the edges here. Um, there's a little bit of work left to do and that's just some sanding on the round overs. And I didn't want to sand the round overs or touch the parts actually till later um, because I wanted this uh, shape for the round over to be intact. Um, the mortise back here is a little bit different I ended up, one of my thoughts was to create a platform and then have the router be on top of the platform. But the problem is I was using this 16th of an inch bit and the bit was not long enough that I could make a platform, put the little compact router on it and have the bit um, meet the wood. So I could have, to, I probably could have used a, coll a, um, a collar extension, but I didn't have one. So I was like, you know, this is not the end of the world here. So instead what I did was I cut the house mortise in steps um, on my little compactor router with the leg clamped up on the bench. So I divided the joint into three parts and each part I cut a little bit deeper um, until I got the depths I needed. Of course cleaned all that up 
and got the rear, the, the rear section of the rails into the rear legs, and that worked out flawlessly. Um, I, it's ecstatic. I'm, I'm ecstatic. I, I couldn't be any happier with how all of that came out. Um, I did do one thing though. Before I did all the surfacing on the, these front legs, I did mark out the exact center locations for um, where I'll be drilling um, a dowel that the arm's going to use to hook into the front legs. As well as, of course, it'll be using the panel for support and the angled um, mortise and tendon joint right here. So, a lot of stuff happened this week, and then next week, pretty much what I just said is I'm gonna be working on the arms and the panel. So, I actually got this in a couple of weeks ago. I didn't say anything last week because I really hadn't given it a lot of use. So, I used it to uh, clean up some of the ebony, and you might have seen it on Instagram then, and then I put a photo up on Instagram for Hand Tool Thursday with both my number four and my new number two. Um, so I'm very pleased to tell you the number two rocks. It just absolutely rocks. Um, I'm really digging it. I can get a couple fingers behind the grip. So I've been kind of gripping it like this, two in here, one here, and one here with the front tote here. And I've been wanting to get a number two or three. I wasn't quite sure which one I wanted to get, but I want to get something else smaller than my number four. Um, but bigger than a block plane. It's a nice little smaller smoother because not everything I do has is such a large piece that the number four is easy to balance on it. So that's why I got the number two. And um, it's a really nice, very well made little plane. It's the same as the number four, just scaled down basically. And um, as you can see, it got right onto these edges and it doesn't have as much surface width. So that's, that's really helpful when you're going on to an edge like this. So it did a fantastic job um, on these edges, getting them nice and cleaned up. So I have a question for you guys this week. And my question is, is this a project you guys are looking to tackle? Is this type of a project? Is this particular project, the Gamble House rocking chair, is that something that interests you? Um, and if so, why? And if not, then what types of projects are you guys looking to um, tackle in your own shops and your homes. So let me know, put that in the comments, and as always, please subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends, and have a great week in the shop.